short examples of uh, New Orleans piano and how it's developed through the years and who were your favourite players? Okay, that's very difficult. I'm sure it is. On a Monday night. <laughs> I'm sure the Henry's fans will love it. Hello Henry's fans. Hey. Hope you're all doing okay. did some recordings in the 1940s. Yep. With Alan Lomax, it was kind of an interview. What were they called then? What was they? Um... It was called the Library of Congress. Library of Congress, yeah. Library of Congress recordings. Yeah. Eight, eight uh, LPs altogether. I remember Jim, Jim Simpson playing us. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, he was just talking away and playing a bit. Just like what you're doing. Yeah, so there's awesome. no awkward silences. <laughs> I'm not telling any jokes. It's alright. Latin America, which was called the 
lots of American people were um, being brought to New Orleans, either not of their own wanting or of their own wanting. But there was a lot of that music coming in and it mixed in with the, the French dances, the quadrilles and all them kind of things. European classical music, all them little, little funny melodies. Uh, like Chopin and stuff. Chopin, they were all, they were, they were all there. And um, you had the, the African music. Obviously a lot of Africans in New Orleans at the time. I'm talking like the late 19th century probably. Uh, the Africans was, had no form really, it was more rhythmical and, uh, and the notes that they used weren't precise so you had in, in, uh, see in Western music everything was very straight you had, when you take ragtime music which, which was what I was talking about Scott Joplin would play um, something like that to the 1940s really there's not a massive change in terms of new orleans piano style piano mm. no mm. they were playing that kind of thing you know uh, but uh, maybe the 1940s for me personally i'm sure i've missed a lot of things out but, uh, all the blues things are going on all that time from all the different places chicago I'm personally a big fan of boogie woogie music from uh, Chicago and Texas and Memphis and lots of other places uh, and they've they're, they're been doing just a straight, very straight chord sequences um, Me Lux Lewis's Honky Tonk Train Blues for example hey. Just mimicking the train Sykes, who was from New Orleans, pretty sure, yeah, I think he was. Uh, play all them 
kind of thing. Oh, oh, I guess I know. Use it all the saves. He did the 44 blues, I think, which is that rolling thing. <laughs> didn't have straight rhythms or straight notes either. They had in between notes, particularly the the, 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 the flattened third and the major third. They used to sing notes in between that, which you can't do on a piano. No. And the flattened fifth and the fifth. And them two notes. Now they'd sing in between them. Which you can sing and, and you, can do it, you can do it on a guitar, but you can't yeah. do it on a piano. Sliding. You can blag it, you can blag it, but you can't bend the piano no, unless you get in there. <laughs> you did a pretty good job of it though, Justin. Well, I'll crunch him up, you see. Yeah. Give us some he, Professor Long, yeah, He also brought in, he, there was a big Latin American craze, dance craze anyway, in America then, uh, through the probably 1930s, and he was listening to this stuff, uh, and he brought, he brought the dance rhythms in. And also have an hour again. in with the Mardi Gras um, tradition of New Orleans, uh, which is mainly chanting, but, uh, but, but he, he wrote one of the first anthems really for the Mardi Gras music, the, the Mardi Gras New Orleans, which is the, that rhythm again. <laughs> rock and roll and he was right on the some people say that he was the uh, the one of the godfathers just so what we were talking about saying um not so long ago it was kind of a bridge between the old i mean he, he played jelly roll martin kind of things you know as well uh, but he was more a simple a simple a much simpler player Harmonically, harmonically, yeah. Harmonically, mm. More rhythmical than yeah. uh, crazy rhythms. Great rhythms. African rhythms, isn't it? African rhythms mixed mixed with a 
the R and B thing yeah. that was coming from Boogie Woogie. Really. They shut uh, what they call it, Rum Boogie. Rum Boogie. Rum Boogie. Brilliant. So that that led into uh, Fat Domino's kind yeah. of thing, Dead Bar Folly Me. Well, just before you go into that, will you just give us a bit of Tippy Tina? Tippy Tina. Um, so yeah, all we were saying about Smiley Lewis and uh, here's the cat. Get the cat on. Oh, Hi, a, Kitty. He's caught a, a strange <laughs> object there. Look, what is that? It's, it's his alien, toy. Alien mouse. <laughs> Tippy Tina. Yeah, so Smiley Lewis, uh, they had this chord sequence. It goes back further than that, I can't remember where it comes from. But, um... It's an eight bar form of the blues rather than the 12 bar. And uh, it, it funked everything up basically. It's definitely like one of the first funk players that's kind of yeah. accepted amongst. New Orleans piano players, at least, anyway, you know, so before you had this uh, fast domino sort of thing. Hang on now. Uh, Dr. John took that to another level, really, you know, he, um, not technically, but his feel is laid back thing. Like, uh, yeah. so hot in New Orleans and I think you have to play a lot Chill. slower when, when, <laughs> when we went there everybody was it's like the Caribbean everybody you have to go slow I mm -hmm. I mean I go slow I haven't got the excuse of the heat I don't know what it is you just go slow I just go slow so <laughs> I relate very much to the New Orleans style you know <laughs> I love it ok so where are we up to then so Dr John uh, yeah, so Dr. John. That's what I mean. There's not that many people, really. In the, in what the, about in the Fats? Uh, who? Fats. Oh, Fats, don't we? Of course, yeah. So when we're going from uh, Professor Longer, uh, you know, he's, he's playing things. <laughs> that's Fats Domino. That's what we're talking about. Uh, but that would come from Professor Longer. Uh, it could be him playing that. Well, he, what I'm was sure that one he did? Um, I'm sure they probably bothered off each yeah, other, you yeah, know, yeah. at the time. Yeah. Professor Longer was just a bit earlier, but I think... Was it Bald Head that's a bit like that? What's the bit the one Bald Head? She walks right in, I think she walks right in. She walks right out. There's many of them. There's yeah, many yeah. Of them. But Fat Stubborn has definitely got that from. Well, that was his thing. Professor then. Longer. He, he <laughs> has it. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> just, <you know. laughs> yeah, great song. I love that. Well, King song. Pleasure Staple, that. Huh? Yay. Hi, um, Mark. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, what about the Blueberry Hill feel? If that's Domino. Well, yeah, I mean, that's Smiley Lewis, like we were saying before. Yeah. I don't know who to attribute that to. Probably Dave Bartholomew. I don't know. I don't know who did the triplet thing. It's like that loading Miss Claudia, isn't it? Again. It's loading Miss Claudia. It's one night with it. One night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One night of sin, Nicole. I know, yeah. I want to do that. But before that, I mean, 
I would say it's before you had lonely, lonely nights. Yeah. You know, all that maybe came after. I get, you know, I get mixed yeah. up these things. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been a bit later on that. He, you'd have to play it down to Dave Bartholomew and the Fat Domino, that triplet rhythm. <laughs> at least they've definitely made it famous, at least. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. that's it for them, really. They remove all the 60s rock and roll came in, the Beatles and Elvis and New Orleans and rhythm and blues. It was ancient history in terms of fashion. Uh, Dr. John probably Kept put it back it on the map yeah. again mm. in the late 60s with the Gree Gree album, which was nothing like what I'm playing there. It's more voodoo, blues and deep and dark stuff. which got to take some serious substances to, <laughs> to get in the mood for that, you know. But anyway. In terms put, of the piano. He brought New Orleans music back, in, back into the uh, spotlight a bit, you know, with his showmanship. Mm. And Professor Longer, who was a janitor, I believe, at the time, he, he, you know, he, he'd gone out of fashion. And he was rediscovered after Dr. John had made a bit of a resurgence. And he was brought back and he, he, he didn't hit the big time, but he, he, uh, he was well recorded, did some great stuff. Um, and, you know, if it, that was, that's how I... Became aware of him, and you know, probably mid eighties. Um, I'm just trying to think. Man. There's only Henry Butler left, really, for me. Henry Butler took all that stuff. He took James Booker. He was an innovator, wasn't he? Yeah. Give us some Henry Butler. I, well, I can't do because he you was can. just a complete one-off. You can a bit. Complete one-off. I always end up in it, tying <laughs> myself into a ball of wool when I try and play my butler. Go on, give it, it a uh, go. His left hand was unbelievable, wasn't well, it? Well, he was a monster. He was a monster. I mean, he, 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 he played the other things, everything I played, but he also played his, his modern jazz. Yeah. Ridiculous rhythms with his left hand. He was a big fan of Mackay Tyne and the jazz player. He was mm. left-handed. Mm. So he brought a lot of that in, and his funkiness was just like off this planet. I can't do it, but do it that. Um, and so it, like something you got, for example, which we play, the original version. Uh, Chris Kenny, it's very straight again, really. Something you got. <laughs> Oh, 
that's not Henry Brilliant. Butler. Brilliant. It is. It's great. But he did these magical Did do do. Magical thing is a syncopation to the nth degree. Yeah, you can do it though. You I know can. you can. Of course you can. Thank you, Justin. That was great. That's Loved I mean, it. I mean, there's... Uh, trying to think. There's, uh, there's nobody else who, who's... Just talking about your favourites, aren't you, really? Yeah, they're you know. my favourite players. Yeah. And also the guys who have changed things a little bit. Yeah, yeah and been moved extremely things on. I mean, yeah. missing out Alan Tussauds, the songwriter. Oh, wow, yeah. God. And production uh, and people like uh, Cosimo Matassi in yeah, the yeah. recording studio and you had the people like Earl Palmer on the drums and mm. the, the band that was playing. That started rock of Earl Palmer on the drums. I mean, he, he that rhythm. Although you'd say it's Professor Long, he, he transferred it to the drums and he invented rock and roll beats, even though he hated rock and roll because he was a bebop jazz player, really. <laughs> He's done a great book called Backbeat. That you, it's more F words than anything else, but it, it's a great read. <laughs> Brilliant. That's that, great. That'll do. That'll do, that'll do. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, happy Tuesday, everybody, Henry's fans, hope you're all doing well and uh, we'll be back in soon, hopefully, when this uh, C word's out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Said someone else, eh? <laughs> All the Take best. Take it easy. Bye.